God bless you for joining me for this special uh, discipleship program for Triumphant Life members and Global Network. Uh, my name is Randolph, your pastor, the president of the Global Network. And today I'm, I'm really uh, privileged to have you guys uh, to be prepared and equipped and to show you the resources you need to unleash every potential in you and, and what God has purpose for you to do. I really believe that this is the time that we don't get excited just about the programs we have in the church and you come into the church and warming the pew, getting excited about good preaching. That does not translate into pragmatic steps, uh, things that you can do uh, to enhance your life. So I, I want this discipleship program uh, not to just be uh, you just grasp uh, getting information again. We, you are so starved with good preaching and good revelation and sermons. It does not mean that we don't need more revelation. That is not what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is, it's about time that we translate the knowledge we possess, the, the, the things we have learned into something applicable, something that you can utilize in your life right now and, and make things work for you. So my desire for this discipleship program is to help you to take the information that you have and systematize it, ingrain it into your habit, develop uh, a ritual that will always prepare you to the result you are looking for. Always also considering your unique talent and giftings. Uh, that discipleship program is focused on helping you to, to discover your hidden potential uh, excavate your, your treasures, your, your hidden wealth, also equip you with strategies, methods, uh, simple steps you can take to monetize your passion and, and help you to master the marketplace because what use of you being productive, it is not bringing any dividend to your life. It's about time we really look at a, a whole system of living Rather, rather than just a religious practice in the church. It's about time we look at you from not you just participating in church programs, but developing your capacity to be useful in the marketplace so that you can be rewarded by the effort and, and, and the investment that you place in people and how you solve problems in the marketplace. So uh, what I'm, I'm trying to tell you right now is this discipleship program is for self-development, spiritual growth, uh, coaching, consultancy, prophetic counseling, all is packaged in this discipleship program. And so everything I'm teaching, I'm going to uh, focus on that different aspects and put a demand on you to make sure that you are following the concepts and applying because what's the use of me uh, studying and getting all this revelation if you are not going to utilize it. So that is my heart. That is what I really want us to get uh, from this uh, discipleship program. All right, now that that is said and done, I want to go forward and, and teach you uh, some things that we started last week, the last segment. Uh, I began to tell you about the relevance and the consistency of you having an incredible relationship with the Word of God. And I'll be, I took you to John chapter 8 when Jesus Christ said so to the Jews who believed on him, continue in my word and you shall be my disciples indeed. Then the Bible says then that you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So it's not everybody who has the ability to access the truth. And I'm talking about the living word and I'm not talking about uh, it just information. So you, you have to discipline yourself by you being conversant with the scriptures, by you applying the word of God into your life, you'd, you'd go through that transformation to have an encounter with the truth. And the truth is what unlocks your potential for the greatness and for you to access the promises of God for your life. So he says, he says to the Jews who believed on him, continue in my word. Therefore, when you believed on him, you believed on the word. You did not believe on the Judaism and the ritualistic processes of your spirituality. It is possible for you to be less religious and much more relational to God. God wants you to have an intimate relationship with him based on his word. 
And so you have to be very careful that you don't invest much more time on ritualistic processes, but a heart a heart releases a transformation based on God's word. So he says to them, those who believed in continue in my word. That means there must be a discipline, a habit, a consistency of interacting with the word. Because if your mentality is transformed by the word, then you can be able to access everything that God has ordained for you. You have to renew your mind with the word, all right? So we, we began to talk about, but today I want to also look at another aspect of it that we, we need to focus on. Now, I'm definitely going to help you to I'll teach you how to be able to understand the scriptures, interpret the scripture, rightly apply it, confess it, meditate on it. It's something that I have to do because without you being uh, an expert in interpreting the scriptures, that your understanding will limit you for unleashing your potential in God. The word of God is relevant. It's our foundation of our spiritual expression. So I really believe that when you begin to, if you want to progress in the way, progress in the Lord, then you need to make sure that you have a consistent reading, meditating, praying the scripture, making sure you have a relationship with the way, because that is what is going to cause you to progress in, in the Lord. So I'm going to take a segment and take my time and take you through that process of how to be able to discover that what God is saying in this way. You're going to learn how to interpret uh, you're going to learn how to be able to apply it. You're going to learn all those systems. So I'll teach you her uh, hermeneutics when it's time. But today I want to focus on something. Uh, in, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 90, we see Jesus Christ. Uh, he, he saw these two brothers who were fishing, casting net to fish. And Jesus says to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And then the Bible says immediately these two men, two, these two fishermen cast their net aside, cast their business aside and follow Jesus. Now today I want us to look at an aspect of what the Lord is saying from that text. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so from that concept, we need to understand that he's speaking to business people, entrepreneurs, people who are fishing, not just because they love fish alone. They fish, get enough fish, bring it to the marketplace, sell it, and then they utilize that money for their livelihood. And so the Lord saying to them that follow me and I will make you fishes of man. He's telling them, I'm going to help you to take your your skills, your knowledge, your ability, whatever you are doing now. And this time, I'm going to change the focus from you fishing fish to fishing men. I'm going to change your focus to be able to now go to the marketplace where you are going to have influence upon people. And in your interaction with them, you are going to be doing business for the kingdom but you're going to utilize the same skill and talent that you already have. And I'm going to shift it into a new target market, not fishing of fish, but fishing of men. And when you do that, you are going to now have a global impact. I'm going to give you all the systems and strategies for you to have a global impact. So what the Lord is saying to them is, I will help you to take your natural ability and skill and they utilize it to be able to interact with human beings of all race, of all gender, of all ethnicity, in all over the world. And then when you do that, then you are going to be a fisher of all men. And so he's telling these people who are business people that I will take your skill and make you a business person for the kingdom. And you're going to get reward here on earth. That is money. And you're also going to get a reward in heaven. That is the reward God is going to give to you for winning souls. But it is not enough for you to just win souls. But you have to also learn to win souls once you are being rewarded here on earth. So you do business to influence people for the kingdom once you generate income for yourself. So that is what I want to teach you. I want us to, everybody listening to me, I want you to be able to take your natural ability and skill and then utilize entrepreneurial concepts and principles, translate it into something that can be usable in the marketplace, learn how to generate income with them as you are influencing them with the nature, the character of God, the principles of the kingdom, so that you can win them for the kingdom, but you're also having something that is rewarding for you here on earth. 
So when Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, he was not trying to enlist them to a religious activity or a program. He was not even talking about the synagogue. He was not tell, talking to them about the temple. He was talking to them about, listen, I'm going to help you to be able to monetize your, your life, your talent and your gift, whilst you fulfill the call of God for your life. You are going to be able to generate income for your livelihood whilst you aim to fulfill the purpose of your destiny. How, much, how many of you really want that? So we are going to start with a simple thing today because we are going to take it step by step. I don't want to give you too much information so that you, you get overwhelmed. So what Jesus said to them, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Think about Jesus Christ giving them a global ministry, an impactful ministry, something that they are going to utilize to open doors for the nation, travel all the nations and, and reach all men, uh, all ethnicity. They have that right ability to, to relate with everybody. But it starts with them, a skill that they already had. A skill that they were utilizing to fish fish in the, uh, in the rivers or lakes of Galilee. And Jesus is saying that the same skill that was is in you now is what I'm going to develop, uh, what is what I'm going to utilize with my concepts and principles, and you're going to utilize that to touch the world. And so you already have the skill to have a global impact and fulfill your ministry. Because see, when you were created, God placed gifts and talents in you that he knew that you are going to need to be able to impact your world, solve problems, and to fulfill your life. You already have the gift. And many of us, we don't know how to be able to take that gift and then channel it in the right way so that we can produce the result we need. The reason why you have not been able to impart your whole world right now is because the gift is not rightly connected to the right market yet. You have not been able to connect what you do effectively to what result you are looking for. You, 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 have, you have the gift, but you have not learned to add business principles to it so that you can be able to have more impact in the marketplace. Are you understanding them? So Jesus is saying to them, follow me, and the same skill that you are using to cut fish here in this ob uh, uh, obscure places in, in Galilee, I'm going to take the same gift, and I'm going to teach you kingdom business principles. Take that same gift, bring it to the marketplace, and you are going to reach the whole world and part their life whilst you affect them for eternity for the kingdom of God. So my question is, what gift do you have right now that you are is underutilized, underachieving, and is not being productive yet. What gift do you have right now that we can be able to rightly equip you with systems, strategies, kingdom philosophies, are you getting uh, relational expertise, things that you can use with this gift so that you can be able to have more impact? How can you take that gift that you have? Maybe you're, you can write, but you have never seen anything valuable from it. You can sing, you have not utilized it. Maybe you can speak, and you don't even know that you can use that to be able to reach the world. Maybe you are a counselor, you know how to help it. Maybe you are somebody that you are so compassionate. Maybe you, you, you love to help people. Every gift in your, in your life was given to you for you to fulfill your purpose and touch the whole world for the kingdom of God. So how do we take that? The Lord says he's going to teach you to take your giftings to be able to touch the world. So if you are a hunter, then you're going to be a hunter of all men. If you're a fisherman, you're going to be a fisher of all men. If you're a teacher, you're going to be teaching all men. Whatever you are, I'm going to help you to take that gift and be able to package it in a way so that you can reach the whole world with what God has given to you. Now, before I leave you, I want to give you an assignment to do. I want you to list everything that you feel like you can do effectively well. Things that you do that people see the distinction, the uniqueness of you do it very well. Maybe you can cook. Maybe you, you know how to write. Maybe you know how to account. Whatever skill. I want you to list at least 10 of your skills that you do well. And if you don't know what you are good at, Ask your friends and family to tell you. Write all those skills because we're going to use those skills to be able to now build the, the system you need to be able to touch the world, start your business, fulfill your ministry, and go after the dreams and purposes of God for your life. All right? So write all the giftings 
that you feel you have the talent, the skills, things that you do effectively well, list at least 10 and make sure that you send to me in my email. Now, when I get it, we are going to go through a process to be able to take that skill and the talent because we are preparing you to have impact in the whole world. You are going to learn how to fish and be able to fish men all over the world. Until next time, this is Randolph Manti, your facilitator. God bless you. Bye-bye.